Now, I would like to move to uh, our next speaker to, co to continue on Mani's talk. He was in the talk of Mani, who is a member of the British British from Westminster, his name is Alistair Phillips. وهو بسمون نيبر هود بوليس أوفيسر اللي هو ده اللي بيكون لصيق جدا بين نحن الناس فيما تتعلق بالجرائم وبالأشياء اللي بتحصل في المجتمع ونسمع منه ده ذول ده الجوب بتاعته حيورينا مفهومه ورأيه في المشكلة دي شنو وليش ليش الشباب عموما بيقعوا في هذه المشاكل والسبب شنو ويعمل لنا شوية هايلايت عليه يعني بعض الادفايس انه نعمل شنو احنا كاباء لو سمعنا او اي حاجه طلعنا بها. أليستر فيليب ثانك يو فيري ماتش فور يور تايم وي ابريشيت ات فيري ماتش. وات اي جست ان انتروديوسينج يو تو ذا اودينس ان عربيك اي سيت تو ذيم يو ويل شير ويز اس فروم يور نيبر هود اكسبيرينس ويز كوميونيتيز. اني ليسونز يو ونت اس تو ليرن فروم يو فروم وات يو هاف بين دوينج ذيس از يور جوب. اند اولسو اف ذي اف اني واي اف يو هاف اني تيبس اور ساينز We should look for, and if we see that happening in our household, we all got kids, we all got teenagers. What should we do in terms of uh, where should we go? I mean, in terms of policing, what is your advice as a police officer? So the floor is yours, uh, Philips. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, firstly, I just want to uh, thank Manny for what he's just said. Um, some fantastic and really good points, which um, I'd, I'd say you've stolen some of my limelight. Uh, there was loads of stuff in there that I wanted to raise, and you've you've made some really good points. Um, I'll, I'm going to start by saying uh, to everyone that if you're joining this, you're on the you're doing the right thing, and this is the first step: is acknowledging that um, you might not know what your child's doing um, as a parent, and you can't always know. But being trying to look for what to do uh, is is a step in the right direction, and it's really important. Um, there's loads of signs that I can point out to you, um, stuff to watch out for, things to um, that are warning signs for you. Um, sadly, a lot of them are actually going to be being a teenager uh, and general stuff that a teenager in London is going to be acting like. So um, when I point out some stuff, I don't want anyone getting too upset or too worried straight away. Um, because a lot of their stuff is just being a teenager now and so for instance um keeping late hours or poor family bonds uh are a couple of the things that are said as you know oh this is a sign that your child might be involved in a gang it also is a sign that your child is a child so don't panic okay um there's loads of things we can do and i'm gonna some of the stuff i've sent out to manny I've emailed over a couple of documents, probably that he's already got, but they're ones that I think are worth sharing. Um, and I, I don't, uh, I'm not particularly tech savvy, but they might be ones that you can add onto the Facebook page. Um, and they're just ones that you can read through, um, just in case. So don't worry if you miss something I say, um, they're, they're all in these documents and there's much better advice from bigger experts than me. Um, so my understanding is that a lot of the Sudanese community are based quite closely around Westminster um, and that's a base where a lot of the Sudanese community moved to um, when they came over to the country originally. Um, so I control the whole of um, Westminster as a policing area. Um, so I oversee all of the neighbourhood policing officers that you'll see walking around on the beat. Um, and that will be engaging with the community. Um, there's a lot of stuff that we can look out for. I wanna go through a few things. Uh, the first thing is important to talk about being a gang because um, Manny mentioned earlier um, that there were concerns that um, from the Sudanese community that were being targeted. Um, this very much isn't the case. Um, it, it is all and does come down at the end of the day to being something that's gang related. Um, and the term gang is very flexible. Um, and there's even children that I would consider to be involved in gangs and someone that is heavily involved in a gang. If you talk to them, their honest opinion would honestly be, no, I'm not in a gang. Um, and so there's quite a lot of, um, the word is quite flexible. Uh, 
And I think it's important that we all understand that, um, that there's starting ranging from uh, what I would call a, uh, an organised crime gang, uh, where they're running things like county lines that Manny's talked about, where they're running drugs across the country, uh, to a gang, which is just a group of people that commit crime together, to um, someone like some of them would just refer to themselves as business associates and entrepreneurs, where they see it as um, they're out there to make money. And these are just people that they're doing business with and friends. Um, and they don't consider themselves a gang at all. Um, and that drops down in grades, each one right down to just being friends at school and knowing someone that is a bit of a bad boy and commits crime um, and associating with them and getting drawn into their world. Um, unfortunately, what you can find is just by being running in those circles where, um, so I'm just going to try and bring my laptop up. Uh, running in those circles where you know someone that isn't a gang can lead to someone getting stabbed or shot. Um, and just running in those circles and associating with them can sometimes lead to bad things happening to your child. Um, so it's important to try and make sure that you know who their friend circle is and who they're hanging out with, which can be very hard at times. Um, so... One understanding that if you ask your kid directly, is he in a gang uh, or is she in a gang? Is, it could be a daughter as well. Um, and they, even if they're being honest with you uh, and you have that honest uh, an open relationship where they would tell you stuff like that, they might not actually realise they are actually part of a gang and what I would consider a gang member um, because they are on a fringe where they're, they're stepped back from it uh, and they just do the odd thing to uh, make themselves some money. For me, I'm not going to list and run through some of the warning signs, which I would say is actually being a teenager. Uh, but what I am going to point out to a lot of parents, because I find it quite hard as a police officer, uh, I'll go in and in the past I've gone into a lot of premises and houses uh, and I meet a lot of parents who are quite shocked um, that, that we think their child's in a gang and they're adamant that they're not. Um, and, but in that bedroom of, their, of your child, you'll have um, an excess of wealthy objects, as in clothing, trainers, um, and computers, um, a, lots of designer gear, Mostly, for instance, I'm going to speak in um, generalizations a little bit here because it's not always the case, but we're looking at track suits, um, trousers and tops of greys, dark colours, blacks, uh, and anything that doesn't light up brightly and make them stand out on the street, while you might have a wall full of trainers. Um, as a parent, the thing I really want you to look out for um, if you consider, and if you're a little bit worried, is if you walk into their room and they've got a lot of stuff that you've not bought for them and you can't really account for how they've paid for this stuff, look up how much it costs and work out how have they managed to pay for those items. Um, because I'm walking into rooms with, like, filled with expensive designer gear um, and I know the parents haven't bought it for them except they've not realised where this money comes from. So that, for me, is a key sign to watch out for. Does your child have a load of wealth that they can't account for? And then if they do, what should you do next? Um, for me, there are neighbourhood officers going around. There's members of the council, um, be it your housing officers, um, et cetera, Manny, people that you can reach out to in the community that can give you advice. If you do see if you do see a police uh, police officer um, and you're in regular contact with one of my um, designated neighbourhood officers, they are great people to go speak to. Um, we don't have to treat everything as um, what's the word I should use. We don't have to treat everything, and we don't have to arrest for everything. And that's not about us creating a criminal record for your child. If you've got concerns, 
if you come to us, sometimes that can be really um, a nice way of in, engaging and um, eliminating that threat that they could join a gang. And it, a lot of the time, from going from quite a young age, they could be on the fringe of a gang where they're not, they don't consider themselves to be in a gang, they're not in a gang, but they're hanging out with gang members and they're doing little jobs. Um, Manny talked earlier um, about them being um, brought into a gang um, and manipulated effectively by elder members of the gang to join it. And they start by doing very small things like, would you hold these drugs for me? Hold this money for me is an even better one where they're being given, here's 50 quid or 100 quid. I don't want the cops to find it on me. They won't search you because you're so young. The next thing is um, this very small young child, maybe 11 to 12 years old, something like that, is holding a load of money for someone. Um, a, an old tactic that then used to happen would they then get robbed by another older kid around the corner and have all the money taken off. They then owe that gang member money those are some of the more sinister ways that they used to recruit into a gang because then they'd owe the gang. But there's a lot more. Um, it doesn't have to be like that. It, it can range in various different ways, but essentially just making friends with them and they've got someone to hang out with and say, look, if you want to be safe, you've got to hang out with us. And then once they've got that into them, that you need to start hanging around with us and be on the corner with them, effectively they're running in circles with gang members um, and they can start being um, brought into their way of life. They start gradually, but slowly, but surely, start doing little jobs for them. It, it's, they see it as really positive because they're making money. Um, there's girls there uh, that they can hang out with and impress. Um, so it, it's very easy for um, young kids to get persuaded and join into that. And as parents, it's not an easy job, but it's a vital job that you guys have got to try and persuade them not to go down that route. And I'd say key for me would be offering them different activities um, and making sure you do everything you can, try and be aware about what they're doing and where they're doing uh, at all times. Uh, and having that oversight of knowing, oh, where, where is he? Who is he actually with? Uh, what are they actually doing? Um, because I think that's key uh, I've seen between uh, trying to stop that and have that knowledge about what your child's up to um, and not just believing them always at face value. Uh, I would say it sounds, it sounds horrific and awful, but I would say a really good way of having an idea is looking in your kid's bedroom when they're out um, and and discussing with them about what they're doing and see what kind of reaction you get from them. Um, and, and this isn't a, at all, I want to make this really crystal, crystal clear, um, is in, in any way to, um, I don't want anyone thinking that they're a bad parent because of this, because, um, or a bad person if their child has started joining gangs or starting associating with bad people. Uh, I know many police officers whose children have ended up doing this, teachers, um, it's, it's people from all societies, people that should be able to spot these signs and know what to look out for, can equally find their children drawn into this, um, into gangs and organised crime, county lines. Um, so it's not something that you should be ashamed of if your child is doing this and it is something they should try and reach out to as many people as possible if you do have these concerns um let's see uh what else can i talk to you about i think that really covers most of the things i wanted to talk to you about um things that i'd say are worth maybe looking out for as well just to cover a few more um, graffiti got mentioned a lot as something to look out for your child. What I would say is postcodes, um, if they're scribbling stuff down like um, uh, W9, W10, for instance, like kids that are not involved in games generally don't care what postcode they live in. If they are referring to, we call them postcode wars sometimes between the gangs because they 
decide that they control an area by a postcode. So please look out for um, if they're scribbling down postcodes. Um, then there's initials as well. There are always stuff to be looking out for. And if you don't know, talk to, um, it's worth talking to the local police. For instance, one of the local gangs um, in my area is Harrow Road Boys. Uh, there's also another gang called the Listen Green Massive. So they write down LGM um, and HRB. Um, and that might be scrawled. Some of them wear it as um, uh, have chains with it written on their chains, things like that. Um, and so it's worth looking at if they're putting down initials that you don't know what they stand for. That is stuff you can look out for. Um, further to that, I'd say, do they keep knives in their bedroom? Um, do they keep any type of weapon in their bedroom? Um, scrawled away with money or drugs? Does their bedroom smell of drugs? Um, I, d I don't want to criminalise any youths that are just and kids that are just because they they um, might have a small habit of smoking drugs. Um, but the key thing for me would be that as parents we look out for the signs that your children are using drugs uh, and obviously cannabis has quite a strong distinct smell um, and the, but again I will say from my, from my point of view there's a big difference between um, a child that recreationally uses some drugs and I don't want to put them out to be the, a master villain who is involved high up in gang problems and will be shooting people to someone that is actually drug dealing and stores it in their room. So it's all stuff to look out for. Um, it's all stuff to be aware of. Um, Manny, does that cover, do you think, the majority of the questions you had and problems you think? No, Philips, can I, before Manny, can I just intervene here? Thank you very much. Really, really very useful. And I can see there is a barrage of questions for you and Manny on the, on the Facebook. But okay. uh, one thing, just you mentioned it, and also I didn't mention it when Manny was talking. We are building already on, on site everything Manny sent us, and we will take everything you have said, all the videos. That will be a permanent web page. We will keep adding anything from younger. So we are archiving everything you have just said. Now, one of the things, uh, because I'm, I'm aware of the time, and also you might have to go. When this is a question being asked before even we start this webinar, they said, uh, "Boris, when really we should imagine we we bought one of the signs you have mentioned, buying stuff which we we have never given them money to do." And this is a problem for many parents. Actually, this is a very good uh, note from one of the people who are watching. She said, or he said, "Very difficult to know what our kids are doing. It's very difficult. There's so much concealing. They don't let you know." But let's assume we have start to pick some one of these signs or two signs do we immediately call the police to, to, to alert him or do we i mean the neighborhood police in, in all community i live in south london we see them on the street but maybe casually i'm walking i see them but now in the COVID, we don't go out do we immediately pick the phone and call the police to find the neighborhood police and then we tell them or what shall we do i mean the timing when do we start calling the police or do you want to call us to start calling people like Manny in the social services before we talk to you? Or what is your advice? When and how to contact okay. the police? Um, firstly, um, I think you can call the police whenever you've got a concern. I think that's really important. Um, okay. And it's really important you feel free to reach out to us. Um, the non-emergency number would be 101. Um, but if you Google, um, if you go online and you write your area, um, and Metropolitan Police or your area police. Um, it should bring up the Met Police website where you can put your postcode or your address in and it should give you a link wherever you live in London to your local um, officers and where they, so it's what their names are and it has an email as well. So you can contact and reach out to them saying, I've explained exactly what you've got um, and it might be the um, my son's going missing for days at a time to um, my daughter's started um, disappearing on Fridays and Saturday nights and I'm worried about her okay. and what she's getting up to, things like that. Um, and again, I'm sure Manny 
will be exactly the same. There's, um, there's loads of other partnership agencies with youth engagement programs and things like that that are there, which, which are a really good point of contact where you can just see and ask for advice about, is my child doing something that he shouldn't be doing? Excellent. Or, or are they just a teenager? Um, but yeah, you can feel free to reach out to your local policing team if you've got concerns. Um, we've all police now are setting up uh, for all areas in London have got a, a youth engagement and diversion team, which are very much more about um, meet. They aren't seen as in uh, win. The, sorry to phrase this correctly. They're not um, going there to enforce police action uh, and arresting young kids. They're there to um, divert them away from gangs. And I would suggest that if you called 101 or went online, you could request um, some action from this youth engagement team, which is there to divert youth away from gangs. Now, this is a question from a teenager, okay, because I got from everywhere it's coming to me now. There's lots of questions which can tell you about really useful what you said on money. Uh, social media has betrayed the police. This is, I read you, either I got it here are the enemies of society. This is what is being read. It's not necessarily my view or all the viewers. How can we as teenagers be able to trust the police when we are uh, pressured to keep quiet? Even if the question doesn't sound right, but this is, I'm just trying to read as it is because it's mm. good to show people they're following us. We are very transparent with their questions. So I read it to you. Social media has betrayed the police and the enemies of society. How can we as teenagers be able to trust the police when we are uh, br uh, pressured to keep quiet. I'm not sure. I mean, is the police, do you think you have a good, uh, do you think teenagers, particularly from black and ethnic minority, do they have trust on the police so they can themselves try to cooperate with you to protect either themselves or if they are in danger, they approach mm -hmm. you? Or do you have any record of teenagers approaching you to help them? Yeah, so I mean, we do have obviously people approach us all the time, ask for help, or we and teenagers, ask help. yeah, of, of all ages. But one of the key things for me, and something that I think the the Met as an organisation has certainly learned, is that we need to do more to increase um, that confidence between young, BAME people uh, and the police. There's there's definitely um, a lack, and it's I mean, it's all over the news at the moment. Um, and, our, and we're doing and I'm trying to set up more engagement between the community and the police so we can talk about that lack of trust that certainly is there. Um, I think social media, for instance, um, the, they make a really good point. We, as the police, have lost a huge amount uh, and do constantly. It takes one bad story um, to lose a load of faith from the community. Um, where a video starts um, three or maybe ten minutes into something going on, uh, where the drugs or a knife have potentially been removed already and dealt with, and then it's just seen as, oh, or someone's already assaulted a police officer, for instance, and then you see the police officer fight back um, or defend themselves. Uh, so it's very easy in social media, and I see... Um, I see bits of videos that have gone viral on social media all the time, which show horrific things police officers do. And then obviously being in my position, I get to see um, the full video or know the full facts of what's gone on, um, which in an unedited video, and it tells a very different story. Um, what I would say is don't necessarily always believe everything you see online or think, what, why is the video starting there? what potentially led to it. Um, but I do understand uh, all young people's concerns when it comes to that. And I would, uh, there's also so many stories. I spent a lot of time working in South London um, where you hear so many stories about, oh, the police did this. And they talk about police, policing terms or something, uh, the word bully van, for instance, which was something that was a term from the seventies. And it's, been stuff that's been passed on from generation and it's actually potentially someone's grandparent talking about why the police are racist and it's something that is then still held within that community in a story that's passed why you shouldn't trust the police um, and the people that are police officers have changed multiple times you know we we don't work in the police for 50 years um, we've 
changed multiple times and those people that dealt with them or dealt with them badly have long gone. So what I really would encourage is just take that police officer you meet at face value and treat that police officer as a person um, and not the uni- not just necessarily refer to them as the uniform that you see in front of you, but give them that chance as an individual um, and say, this is my problem, please help me. Um, and I'd be very, very shocked and would like to know if you did not get a good service from them or if, you, if they did treat you badly. No, um, but- Philip, thank you very much. But uh, I, I, I wish we have, uh, we definitely, we thank you very much, Manny. We will have to bring you, there's lots of stuff here, which is, you're doing quite great. But uh, I have two things before I let you go, because I think Manny will continue with us and he will give. But one thing uh, uh, we had with Sussex Police when we were in Brighton, this organization, the University of Sussex before, we had a very good relationship with them as an organization, okay? And we have them helping us in the training. We communicate with them very well. Uh, I suggest this to some uh, black uh, forum here in London, Bart, I'm not, sure, I'm not the expert on this, but part of the black getting uh, trust, more confident in the police, uh, if the police can open the slide door, when you're doing the training on how to deal with ethnicity and black and so on, if you could maybe invite some from the community or maybe from the teenagers, just think about it. I'm, I'm not asking you the question, but think about it. So you can say, okay, look guys in South London or whatever, we're having on this day a training. We can let you attend maybe the morning of that day so they can see how you guys have been trained. Maybe when we see it as the teenagers, we can point you, oh, that's not the way you, you, you know about this teenage. But this is just a food for thought and I'm sure we will carry on with you. Two quick questions and I really want about the time. One of them, they said you have talked a lot about gang and I think that's a real problem. If there is any quick one, two, three other things you think are also quite serious, you haven't mentioned them. Uh, the gang is the, is the key topic, we know that. But if there is any other issues you think have led to the death of our youngest on the street, uh, you talk about drug. Not necessarily you're talking about because there is drug part of the gang and there is drug who smoke drug. I mean, my and I smoke alcohol or I drink alcohol or whatever. If there is any other issues apart from the gang you think that are important also to think of? Away um, from the gang, nothing to do with the gang. Anything else? Okay, uh, yeah, so first I just want to quickly touch on that other point that was mentioned. Uh, we do, in our training, uh, all this stuff, that especially now, it's changed all the time and each year we evaluate the training. So as in police training, one of the things they do is actually get in young people or people that used to be young who are now adults who talk about their experiences about being stopped a lot um, or... Uh, about how they've been treated by police when they are stopped. Uh, and so we, we take them in uh, and they, they give a talk to police officers. So we get their account for kind of what's going on. Then on the non-gang side, um, this is um, my personal opinion. Uh, it, and it, uh, this is just my view as a police officer for 15 years. Um, the In London, the reason people are getting shot and stabbed uh and i won't talk about specifics about yeah, yeah, yeah. that's happened but my my opinion why everyone gets st- um, stabbed and shot there is not a domestic incident is actually because there's some involvement with gangs or drugs okay. uh, it's disputes with drug dealing it's um trying to control an area or gangs for instance when they're young and they're in a gang one of the big problems is it's about respect it's about um showing that you're not scared uh doing something to earn yourself um like a reputation on the street and that's why there's a lot of violence uh it is very rare uh and again i'm talking about generalizations here it's very rare that we have random stabbings which aren't linked to a gang or... And I can see Manny also mentioned here, 90% are either drug or gang related, which is coincide with what you said. Just one last question, thank you very much. If girls, oh, you, you, you mentioned girls sometimes, but uh, do you also see girls in gangs? I mean, we haven't heard about much of that, but so you think they're the same? Although we hear most of the deaths of boys, but if girls also involved in gangs from your... Yes. Um, Girls 100% are involved in gangs. Um, we don't talk about it. We don't see them um, 
as and we don't talk about it as much, but generally because it's the boys that are getting stabbed, it's the boys that are getting shot. Um, it's the boys that are more involved in the criminality, but um, girls are, there he goes, Manny's saying, girls are a hidden element. Yeah, you're right, he said, yeah. Um, they get involved in all the parties, they end up holding drugs, guns, um, they date, they are taken advantage of sexually um, for gang members and things like that. And they also, at times, have been involved. They can be involved in egging the boys on to do certain things. Um, so, yeah, they are very much involved in gangs as well. Okay. Alistair Phillips, thank you so much. On behalf of the whole uh, who are watching you, not just here, really, thank you very, very much. It's Saturday. It's a treasure time. Thank you very much. And, I, and you have answered lots of the questions. I picked the one which are quite, uh, if you like, the big one coming to me, but there's lots of questions here, but we will stay engaged, man is here. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alistair, thank you. بلاد ميلا بنحلم بفضاء وسع بنحلم بزمن أجمل بلاد ميلا بلاد ميلا